All right, this may be the final breakdown of this particular Monday morning idiot that has run well into the evening. Um, there's lots to go over in this series. Let's, let's just get to it. Let's watch it. Um, this is just going to be handoff up the middle here. Um, Jacob's Texan, th this kid just gave OU fits, the, the Allen Jr. kid. Sm small, little squatty guy. He's the kind of guy Gabe Eichert talks about hating to play because he's just so low and powerful and he gets underneath you. Um, just consistently a problem. Um, but, you know, nothing, nothing particularly special there. It's another one of those plays that makes me think, boy, I sure wish Jacob Sexton was playing left tackle and Heath Ozida was playing left guard. Like, just... And I, and I get it. I, you got Josh Bates out there. You got Jacob Sexton trying to help him with the calls. Like, I, I get it. There's a reason for it. It's just... I, I don't know. I, I feel like you're making two position, three positions worse. I guess two positions worse instead of one. And that's just troubling to me. But, again, I, I get the counter argument, too. It's just one of those things. All right, let's stop staring at those guys. All right, so Houston takes a timeout. This is the big play. I mean, this is really what probably pushes OU out of the trouble for the most part. Um, I, Josh, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Nate Roberts sells this so well. Um, all right, we're going to work. We, you can use the fireworks for this one. Watch him right there. And watch, he's going to sell, and then he'll kind of, I mean, like he'll sell the block, and then he kind of gets skinny and just kind of waits for all this traffic to wash, and then he sneaks out to up here. Like kind of, yep, and then just everybody falls asleep just a little bit. And you got to give him credit because this is not, it's not a great throw. A um, little behind him, tough catch. Now, again, I, I think Jackson's worried about this guy right here. Yeah, we got the fireworks going again, so enjoy that. But um, So I, I understand a little bit, but this is kind of the deal. Where, why not just drop it with some touch over here? Like, why, why do we have... It felt like everything he had to throw... And anything intermediate was just had to be on a line. It's the same deal with the with the Bauer Sharp thing earlier, where he just he, instead of just dropping it over the defender, he wants to throw it through him. Uh, here's a great look, though. Sorry, this is not meant to be a Jackson Arnold thing. Just again, it, it kind of indicative of the evening. Even when it went right, it just didn't look right. Um, so here he is. Here's Jackson. Or, uh, sorry, there's Nate Roberts right here, and he's just going to kind of I don't know. Just kind of shimmy. He kind of knocks the end there, kind of sells it like he's moving to the second level, and then when he does, heck of a play, though. Uh, gutsy call by Seth Luttrell. Like I, th I liked a lot of that. I, I think that all – because you couldn't run it on third and ten. Wouldn't have made sense. Wouldn't have worked nearly as well. Wouldn't have caught anybody off guard. But on second, I, I thought that was a great, great call. Um, all right, so here we go. First and ten. Oklahoma needs pretty much a first down, and this game is over. Good hard running by Javante Barnes. You know what I want to see there? Uh, okay, let's turn off fireworks. Ooh, looks like Cade McNamara right down here at the bottom. Uh, no, that's Bauer Sharp. Just whiffs. Whiffs on not one, but two blocks. Wow, that's bad. I didn't even I I had guys, I hadn't even gotten to this point in the review. Watch him right here. He's gonna whiff on this guy, and then this guy's gonna come down. He's gonna whiff on him too. Man. One. He missed one there. Now I'm gonna miss another one. I, and who makes the play? The second whiff. Right there. Number twenty five. Let's go back and just watch it one more time. Now, I will say it's possible that this, this is enough of what he's supposed to. Just getting that guy to have to, yeah, that's not, okay, that's not even his, my apologies. He, 
he whiffs badly on 25. That, that's, that's his mistake. The other one, that's not him. And the guy that I'm starting to think maybe deserves a look, look at Cade McIntyre here, going to come in motion. And the guy that I thought Sharp missed, this guy right here, watch him just get smacked. Cade McIntyre, bam. I mean, is it pretty? Is it what the coaches would teach? No. But did it get the job done? Did it get the guy out of the play like Cade McIntyre's got to do there? Yep, 100%. And now, on the other hand, let's say Bauer Sharp gets a hand on this guy. Let's move it forward here just a little bit. I don't know that Javante Barnes goes far, but he gets more than he got here. Um, the blocking has to improve. That Bauer Sharp's blocking has to improve. It's, it's becoming a problem for Oklahoma. Um, I said the same things last year, like I said earlier about Austin Sogner, and they got better. So, you know, there, there's hope. I'm not trying to be super negative and say, oh, you know, dark clouds or whatever, but it, it's got to be better than this. All right, second and eight here. O-line getting a little push there, that, that was better. I mean, again, I know people say, well, it's only three or four yards. Or, you know, probably three yards, Josh. I get it. But when the defense knows what you're doing, they know you're running up the middle, they know you're not trying to take any risk, like, that's tough to run against, especially they're putting eight, nine in the box. Like, that, that's not going to be easy. So if Oklahoma, you know, they got three yards on that one. You, you do that over four, you move the ball, and Oklahoma gets out of this game without any of the sweat that this thing becomes here in a second. I don't know what people are mad about here. I, I, and to, to OU fans' credit, I've not heard a lot of you mad about this. This is it's a stupid thing to do. When Jackson stands up like that, guys, this is what Houston has to do. They've got to go get him. If he just stands there, the whole thing's just moot. Stupid, 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 unforgivable. It was stupid for a second. And you can see the rest of his team is like, what are you doing? What are you even thinking about right there? You can't make that mistake. You just can't do it. That's, that is an unforgivable error. Um. I mean, you know, let's be real here. The clock's still ticking. OU was going to pump that ball, and there was going to be four seconds maybe left. O Houston fair catches that ball, and they're going to have one play. One play. That's all they've got. There's nothing left on that clock. Instead, OU gives it to them, and there's 30 seconds left. And they could, you know, as well as OU's defense is playing, as, it, Houston couldn't really turn it on at the end. There was nothing left to do. Because the only way they geared up to play that game was the complete antithesis of what they were going to have to do on that final drive. And I said it at the time. I mean, there was no way that they were ever going to – I'm mean, sorry, not that there was no way they were ever going to do anything. Oklahoma was going to trade them the five yards for the five, you know, seconds over and over and over again, and it was going to bleed out. I mean, they weren't going to be able to get that done. Uh, it's among the dumbest penalties I've ever seen. Just, I mean, flat out. And it shocks me. I, <laughs> that is some cold rage from Brent Venables right there. Like, just telling him to just get it, basically get your ass over there. Like, we're not talking about this. We're not overlooking this. Like, you've put us in a bad spot. Um, and again, that doesn't shock me. I mean, Brent Venables is not a, he's a no-nonsense kind of guy. Like, I, I get it. So, I just, 
it still astonishes me that that play happened. That is middle school football crap. It's it's just unthinkable. 